We're here today with Jameson Blanford and Mira Lamy, Technical Marketing Engineers for the Wireless Networking Business Unit for Cisco Systems. Jameson, can you please tell us what you'll be showing us today? Sure. So what we're going to be showcasing is the harmful effects of RF interference and how Cisco delivers superior self-healing with Cisco Clean Air technology compared to the competition. So RF interference can range from you know, devices such as a Bluetooth headset or a cordless phone, even a microwave oven. And they can also go to severely show-stopping sources of interference, which is Mir is going to demonstrate for us. So here we have a 2.4 gigahertz analog video camera that has adjustable channels. And right now I have it on channel one. All right, let's go ahead and fire that up and see how it looks on a spectrum analyzer. As you can see from the spectrum analyzer, the duty cycle of channel one is nearly 100%, meaning that any other protocols, such as Wi-Fi, that want to use that channel are going to be blocked from transmission. All right, let's adjust that to channel 11. Now looking back to our spectrum analyzer, we can see the interference source on channel one has disappeared, and the source has now moved to channel 11, blocking that channel now. To demonstrate the self-healing capabilities of Cisco's clean air technology, we'll be using an Aeronet 3500 series access point, as well as multiple 11N clients playing an active video stream. We'll be monitoring this with Cisco Spectrum Expert, timing this with an iPad, and here is our wired video source, which will not be disrupted, and our wireless video client, which will be disrupted. We have an additionally an active ping going so we can conclusively tell when the connectivity has been restored to the client. All right, Mir, you ready to fire up that video camera? Three, two, one. So as you'll see and start to look around the room, clients in the background have lost connectivity and their video has stopped. Clearly, this has caused a huge disruption in the clients on the network. They've been disconnected and Cisco's clean air technology is now actively scanning and identifying the source of interference, and it's going to select a better channel and self-heal away from this dire source of interference, which is causing these connectivity problems. So what we'll see is the system will self-heal, the pings will restore, and it's restored so at 40 seconds, the system has now changed to a different channel and has resumed the video playing on those clients. As you can see also from the spectrum analyzer that we have here, the system was originally on channel one, the video camera came on, and the system had changed to channel six to avoid it and restore connectivity to the clients, preventing unnecessary downtime and providing more reliable service to the end user. Now we're going to evaluate the self-healing capabilities of Rubo's AP105, which also features adaptive radio management. However, this access point has a different Wi-Fi chipset than the AP125, and you'll see throughout this test some inconsistencies in the results you get from each of these access points. Okay, Mir, let's go ahead and start the camera and see what happens. Three, two, one. As you start to look around the room, you'll see all the clients have been disconnected and their video source has stopped. Clearly, the source of interference is jamming the channel. The Wi-Fi access point cannot communicate with the clients and the clients also cannot communicate with the access point. Now, what is Aruba actually doing during this? They're going to go and measure non 8 to 11 noise level. They're going to show that on the access point, and I'll show you in the CLI what that value is. But what you'll notice is it's very inconsistent. It jumps all over the place. So their thresholds of making a channel change are based on symptoms, symptoms that are variable, that are not very accurate. And Aruba's algorithm is taking this garbage into their algorithm, which leads to garbage out. Garbage in, garbage out. The algorithm will not be able to effectively change channels in this situation. So now we've waited over a minute. Clearly, the source of interference jamming that channel, completely uh, jamming it so that the Wi-Fi access point cannot communicate. Now let's get, uh, take a look at the noise level on Aruba CLI. Now we have an Aruba AP105. 
And now we're going to see what ARM thinks is the noise level for that access point. So while the camera is on, the noise level is actually negative 71. That's not too bad. Show it again. Oh, it's jumped to negative 76. Alright, we'll show that again. And oh, now we're down to negative 66. So the noise level on the AP105 is varying a lot, even though the environment isn't changing and the interferer is still there. As we keep going, negative 66 still. Now we're going to go up oh, negative 73. It's changed again. After five minutes of having this interference source present, Aruba's AP105 still has yet to change channels. And as you saw in the CLI, its noise floor that it measured was quite variable, causing its threshold never really to be kicked off to change channels. Now we're going to evaluate the self-healing capabilities of Aruba's AP125, which features adaptive radio management. How does that fare when RF interference is injected into the network? So we have the same set of 11N clients playing an active video stream, and also another client with that continuous ping. All right, Mir, let's go ahead and fire up that video camera. Ready? Three, two, go. So our interference source has started. And now, as you look around the room, all the video clients have been jammed, and their client the connectivity has been disrupted. Now, Aruba will continue to sit like this nearly forever. The problem is, is that they can't accurately detect sources of RF interference because they're only using a Wi-Fi chip. It doesn't have a dedicated spectrum analyzer, which is purpose-built for the process of detecting and avoiding RF interference. So clearly, clients are disconnected. And as you can see on our spectrum analyzer, the channel that the Aruba AP was on was jammed. Here we have an AP125. And now we're going to show what ARM thinks the noise level is at. So we're going to look at channel 11, and it thinks the noise level is still negative 92, even with the video camera on. Show that once again, still negative 92. So we've waited over five minutes now, and the Aruba system still has not changed.